sex, drugs, and power tool eviscerations. Video games have come a long way from stomping mushroom monsters, but a few have apparently gone too far. The original Final Fantasy VII is one of the most popular games of all time, and is full of mature content. The main plot includes murder, terrorist attacks, and prostitution. Almost. One location in particular stands out to video game audiences who are probably a bit numb to violence at this point. The Honeycomb Inn is a thinly veiled brothel that players can visit during the early hours of the game. Believe it or not, the inn was once planned to be much more upfront about its operations. There's cut content buried in the original game's code that reveals just how explicit the Honey Bee Inn once was. The lobby originally had posters showing off the different girls that visitors might hire during their stay. There were even lists of prices tagged with different innuendos, so players could discover exactly what services the inn's typical patrons were interested in. Where the original draft of the inn really went too far was with its tie-in to Cloud's infamous Don Corneo quest. Cloud could collect mystery panties from one of the inn's customers who apparently stole them from a laundry line, and there were heavy implications that the underwear actually belonged to a child. Some deleted scenes served to enhance their source material, but this is one section that the devs were right to rethink. Final Fantasy has long been known for its willingness to explore complex adult relationships and heavy topics. One of the best examples of this is Final Fantasy VI. At one point in the game, a character named Celeste believes that she's hit rock bottom. Her world has just been conquered and partially destroyed by the mad soldier Kefka. She's stuck on an island, separated from everyone she knows, and she's just watched one of her friends die. Believing that she has nothing left to live for, she jumps from a cliff. When she washes up on the shore, she resolves to leave the island reunite with her friends, and save the world. It's an incredibly dark and significant moment in the story, but it's also something that a huge number of players never got to experience. When the game came to the US, Nintendo of America's content policies required the scene to be changed. On the SNES, Celeste remembers that some of the island's previous inhabitants would leap off the cliff to perk up, and so she decides to do the same. It's a change that completely appends not only what happens in the scene, but also the entire emotional arc of Celeste's story. It's a baffling choice to frame this as something she's doing to make herself feel better. Kids, don't try this at home. Games change for a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's because the developers decide that they want to take things in a different direction. Other times, a publisher might step in when they see something they really just don't like. That's what happened to Martha is Dead, a horror game developed by LKA and published by Wired Productions. The game was set to release for PC and every major console, but just over a week before the launch, players learned that the PlayStation experience would be a bit different than the devs had intended. Specifically, PlayStation insisted that the interactivity be removed from a gruesome scene in which the player character cuts into a corpse, and some sexual references were also dropped entirely. Neil Broadhead of Wide Productions told IGN, The changes in content were made as a result of conversations with PlayStation in the lead-up to our launch. Wired Productions stressed that the game's story was left virtually untouched by the changes. That's good news for anyone who wants to play the game on PlayStation. But fans still felt it was strange that Sony stepped in to mandate console-exclusive censorship in the first place. There was a time before the MCU, and it was weird. In 2004, The Punisher had just put Marvel's most violent hero on the big screen. And while critics weren't in love with the movie, the accompanying video game made an impact. It managed to secure an audience, and tested the limits of how graphically violent games of the time were allowed to be. So, 70 plus bodies, lots of broken windows. In the comics, the Punisher is known for being brutal. Frank Castle is hellbent on killing evildoers and avenging his lost family. But he also seems determined to deal with his enemies in the most painful, violent ways imaginable. The game really leaned into that sadistic aspect of the Punisher's character, and it went so far that some scenes had to be toned down so it could actually be released. Ratings boards in the US and the UK had a particular problem with the interrogation scenes that were sprinkled throughout the game. To get the info he's after, the Punisher would smash, cut, and torture his enemies with whatever supplies were in the room, whether that be a drill or a buzzsaw. The final release version of the game cut down on the interrogations and threw different camera angles and a black and white filter on the executions, or simply cut to black altogether. The missing content might have watered down Marvel's most violent hero, but it also allowed the game to see the light of day. The Grand Theft Auto series is notorious for being full of crime, violence, sex, and raunchy humor. And it's been that way from the very beginning. He can either let light that police officer on fire or cut him in half with a chainsaw. This is entertainment? Not everyone appreciates what GTA has to offer, but there was one time in the series' history when developer Rockstar actually had to remove content from a game. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas accidentally caused a massive stir that led to the game becoming a topic of debate across America. 
and up into the highest levels of government. Shortly after launch, hidden code in the game was uncovered with a mod called Hot Coffee, which gave players access to a sex scene minigame that wasn't intended to be playable in the final release. While fans of the series might have been amused by the discovery, the rest of the world seemingly wasn't. Australia banned San Andreas outright, and it received an adults-only rating in the United States, causing many retailers to drop the game. US senators were so outraged that they proposed federally regulating the ESRB. A class-action lawsuit against Rockstar and Take-Two Interactive cost the GTA publisher $20 million. Rockstar eventually earned back the game's mature rating by re-releasing it with the hot coffee code completely removed. Disaster was averted, but the code that sparked the controversy would resurface years later. In 2021, data miners discovered the code for the scene buried in Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy Definitive Edition. Congress didn't get involved this time around, but Rockstar did temporarily pull the PC version of the trilogy while they removed the files again, but didn't fix the many glitches. Mortal Kombat is known for three things – fantastic fighting mechanics, over-the-top violence, and a pretty bad 90s movie. I'm going to my trailer, no, I'm gonna hanging. get a gun, and I'm gonna shoot no, 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 myself no, 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 for being in your movie! Me, the original game wowed arcade players in 1992 with graphics that were revolutionary for the time. The feeling of pulling off a fatality, especially paired with the game's novel visual flair, kept players returning. Those signature finishes became synonymous with the series. If you removed fatalities from Mortal Kombat, the series wouldn't be the same. Kids relish their victory and their bloody choice. Should they pull out their opponent's heart? Or simply rip his head off just to see his spinal cord dangle in a pool of blood? But that didn't stop Nintendo from trying. When the company decided to bring the original arcade game to the Super Nintendo in 1993, the home console version of the game was almost completely changed. Nintendo sensors removed all the gore from the game, replacing blood with spit and sweat, and essentially turned fatalities into regular attacks with flashy names. Considering that the massive public outcry caused by Mortal Kombat eventually led to the creation of the ESRB, it's hard to fault Nintendo for playing it safe. The company had a family-friendly identity to uphold. Mortal Kombat co-creator Ed Boon has said that he understood the decision to tone down the violence. Telling Eurogamer, Nintendo felt like they had an obligation to not offer something like this to a system that's played by many young players. The release was so controversial that it influenced Mortal Kombat 2 which introduced ironic friendship endings instead of fatalities. The game shipped without blood and gore to Sega Genesis, Master System, and Game Gear owners too, with one secret. A secret blood code that would unleash all of the guts you could ever want. Sometimes scenes get removed from games to appeal to different markets, which is what happened with the original Resident Evil. But that's not where the story ends. The game debuted in Japan as Biohazard, and quickly climbed to fame around the world. Players in the US and Europe who excitedly dove into the game were treated to a slightly different experience, however. The live-action intro scene that starts off the game was massively edited outside of Japan, with a black-and-white filter and some careful camera cuts removing the most violent parts of the scene. Fans obviously wanted to be able to get the full Resident Evil experience, and in 1997, Capcom claimed to offer them just that. Resident Evil Director's Cut was supposed to restore all the content that English-speaking players missed out on, but it didn't. While the director's cut did add back in some minor moments throughout the game, the original live-action intro was still missing. Capcom claimed that a publishing mistake caused the scene to be removed completely by accident. Luckily, modern technology can sometimes fix mistakes of the past. Resident Evil fans are a dedicated bunch, and in 2021, a fan-made patch restored all the content that's been missing these past several years. Duke Nukem is a franchise known for fun gameplay, sprawling levels, and a crass sense of humor. Mm, don't have time to play with myself. Despite the extreme violence, titillation, and foul language, Duke Nukem is still an important part of gaming history, and it occupies its own place in the industry. That place is not on Nintendo consoles, or at least it probably shouldn't be. In 1997, Nintendo ported the incredibly popular Duke Nukem 3D to the Nintendo 64. But to make the game fit in with Nintendo's brand image, the company had to make some edits to the material. All of the nudity and much of the intense violence had to be stripped out of the game. But one of the most dramatic structural changes was that the entire first level was virtually removed. Duke Nukem 3D opens with the hero exploring a red light district level, blasting baddies as he makes his way through an adult theater and a massive gentleman's club. At least it did on other systems. Nintendo renamed the level Gun Crazy, turns the adult tapes into guns, the alcohol into soda, and the club itself into a burger joint. Duke Nukem 64 is a watered-down experience, but it still gave a new batch of gamers a taste of the series. Sometimes what might seem like a small detail to game developers or their fans can actually cause massive problems. 
Volition learned this firsthand when Saints Row 4 was nearly prevented from being released in Australia. Ahead of the game's scheduled release, the Australian version of the ESRB, the Australian Classification Board, outright refused to give Saints Row 4 a classification. For the developers, this was a fate worse than getting an adults-only rating, because it meant that the game simply couldn't be legally sold in Australia. In a statement provided to The Guardian, the ACB explained, the game includes elements of illicit or prescribed drug use related to incentives or rewards. In other words, drugs are allowed, but depicting a character benefiting from their use is not. Volition eventually made the decision to cut an entire mission in which players discover some alien drugs, smoke them, and temporarily gain out-of-this-world superpowers. The changes ultimately allowed Australian gamers to play Saints Row 4 without getting a wildly different experience from people in other parts of the world. And hopefully no one outside of Australia was tempted to smoke alien drugs to get superpowers after playing through the game.